Yo, Phillies fans, it looks like you guys did not get the Soto you thought you'd be getting, but instead you guys make a trade with the Tigers. Hey, it's not a bad deal. Let's dive into it and talk about this kind of big trade for each team. The Phillies received Gregory Soto and Cody Clemens, while the Tigers received Nick Mayton, Matt Verling, and Donnie Sands. Now, what team won this trade? That's up for you guys to tell me in the comment section down below. Do you guys think the Phillies got fleeced? Do you guys think the Tigers got fleeced? Now, personally, I think this trade is pretty good for both sides. So let's start with the Phillies because this is a big deal getting Gregory Soto because the Phillies really have tried adding new pieces to the bullpen and the rotation ever since their World Series. One of the biggest reasons the Phillies went out and got Gregory Soto is because he's really good against left-handed hitters. In the World Series, it was really hard to get people like Jordan Alvarez out and because of that reason, someone like Soto would be really good if they wrapped the face Jordan again. Apparently, left-handed hitters hit just 225, a 328, and a 277 against Soto. That is really good numbers for someone that is kind of, in a sense, a lefty specialist. Perhaps one of the most noteworthy things is that he has only given up just one home run in his career to a left-handed hitter. Gregory Soto has been in the league for four years year he has played 186 games and in 186 games he's only given up one home run to an opposing left-handed batter now he did kind of have a weird season last year he was an all-star at one point and then he kind of just you know had a kind of bad second half but Gregory so the start of the year was really good and I think this is a great move by Dave Dombrowski because he really is starting to cook before we get into a big blockbuster trade please leave a like and subscribe with that being said let's get into it a good thing as well is that Soto does still have three to four years of service time so the Phillies will be able to pay him an arbitration salary that is probably around 3.1 million for those three to four years that's a really good deal if Soto could at least provide that left-handed specialist opportunities and just save the games pretty much if Soto could just be a decent closing pitcher or even setup guy for someone like Craig Kimbrell it would be amazing to think about Philly's pen include Kimbrell Soto Strom now as well as Sir Anthony Dominguez Jose Alvarado which is really good Andrew Belletti and Connor Brogdon not bad for a bullpen that got you to a World Series last year and you add a couple of pieces that make that bullpen even better they also picked up Clemens which is a utility infielder who got his first taste of the big leagues in 2022 the son of longtime pitcher roger clemens slash just 145 or 197 and 308 it's nothing to write home about but he did have five home runs and over 127 plate appearances with the tigers however in triple a he did hit really well he had a 274 a 327 a 535 i just think if the phillies allow this guy to have a little bit of time in the big leagues maybe he could grow and become a better mlb player once he gets used to that pitching because man Having a father like Roger Clemens, I know it doesn't mean much, but hey, when you have a father like that, bro, you know you gotta have that dog in you. That's all I'm saying. He did end up playing first, second, and third base in 2022 in some left field here and there. It is a small sample size, but he did earn at least two defensive runs at first and third. However, I do think it's unlikely that the Philadelphia Phillies will play him every day. I just think he's more of a minor league option and someone that they could bring up and down and kind of just abuse the system. And he'll be there if someone does get injured. So with that being said, let's get into the tigers picks because the tigers kind of got some really good people with a lot of years of control for example nick mayton nick mayton had a 0.6 war last season he had a 250 batting average he had a 341 obp a slug of 514 an ops of 855 an ops plus a 138 he was 38 percent better than your average player however he did only have 72 plate appearances so say what you want with that but he did play 34 games he's been with the phillies for two years now and he has over i want to say six or seven years of control or six yeah i think it's six years of control he's gonna be a free agent in 2020 it was a really promising kid that had you know not that much opportunity because you still had all those positions pretty much filled he could play the outfield but at that point you're you're kind of just wasting the talent on your roster if you're playing him outfield nick mayton wasn't bad man he was pretty good for the fills last year and he did play in 2021 played 52 games in 2021 he was a 256 batting average 323 obp and 385 slug and a 91 ops plus he had a down year but he still didn't play as bad as people expected now another prospect that was sent over was Donnie Sands. Donnie Sands, for you guys don't know, is a catching prospect. He's 26 years old, which was originally drafted by the Yankees in 2015, oddly enough. He was the number 21 prospect 
in the Phillies top 30 prospects. That says a lot because you're you're giving a lot to get Gregory Soto from the Tigers. So I assume that these prospects could they pan out? Who knows? But that would be really good if Donnie Sands could get up to the big leagues because they kind of just need to fill that catcher position in the Tigers. I I just feel like when I think of the Tigers, the only people I really think of because I just personally have not watched them a long time. Uh, closing, I did think of Gregory Soto. I thought of chafin which chafin is still a free agent who knows where chafin will go maybe this is creating room for chafin to go to the phillies that's one thing that could happen because they do still have one open roster slot chafin still needs to sign with a team man if chafin goes to the phillies that'd be really interesting also the last person they snagged in this deal was matt verling now matt verling kind of had a really bad season last year he did play a lot of games however he played about 117 games and he kind of had a okay season per se he was he was 17 percent worse than your average mlb player however he did hit a 246 and a 297 and 351 slug in 2021 he did have a better year just because he didn't play as much in 2021 he did play 34 games but he is but he is kind of like the other guy you guys got on the tigers he has six years of control pretty much this guy is kind of young still and I think it's not bad. He plays the outfield in first base. So Matt Verling, there you go, Tigers. But I do think this is a good deal overall. I think it depends on what your team views it as. Is it a fleece for the Phillies? Is it a fleece for the Tigers? Can Gregory Soto actually produce and become a star bullpen piece again? Or can someone like Clemens kind of fall off and kind of ruin this deal for the Phillies? Because you're pretty much spending one prospect and two kind of major league ready guys for Gregory Soto, which is a bullpen piece that you kind of didn't need, but you kind of did because you need someone to strike someone like Jordan Alvarez out. And the Tigers pretty much get two everyday ready players and someone that is a really good prospect or someone that has a lot of potential as a prospect being the number 21 prospect in the Phillies organization. I think it depends on how you look at it. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. My name's Joe aka Mitch. Have a good one. Bye.